All right, all right, all right, my friends. Welcome to episode 12. 12, the year special, I guess you could say. Uh, we've done one a month pretty much. And uh, so this is episode 12. And none other than the thief extraordinaire, Sanguine Jester, is here. Uh, I mean, this guy, man, pulling off all kinds of crazy steals. He's got an awesome costume, uh, excuse me, paper doll in the game. Um, I mean, known for his 24 hour streams and rags to riches. And I've got plenty of questions to talk about all that. And uh, anyway, after I already said a bunch about you, Sanguine Jester, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you covered most of the important parts, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm Sanguine Jester. If you guys don't know, if you haven't watched, I stream over on twitch.tv slash Sanguine Jester. Um, you know, like Pwnstar said, we both play Thieves. We're of a yeah. similar, similar ilk here. Just out there, you know, terrorizing Avedon in I, the funnest way imaginable. I think this has been like, I mean, yeah, I would definitely say if I was to take, uh, you know, at the end, I always like to ask everybody who should be the next guest on the Pwncast. And if I like tallied everybody, I would imagine somebody's going to correct me in the comments, right? But either way, I would imagine that you are the number one requested person in the past <laughs> 11, uh, 11 phone casts. So, um, uh, you know, and, and people bring it up on my streams and everything. Um, I've been excited for this because, like we've already said, we both play Thieves. And I just mm -hmm. think that we're going to have, uh, you know, a pretty good time, uh, you know, being being thieving. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. You know, well, uh, what, it's an what, honor. Thank yeah. you guys for bringing me onto the podcast. First and foremost, I do appreciate it. It's awesome to be here. Yes. Yeah. It feels what, good. What got you into gaming, man? Like, just let's let's take it back to the childhood, you know, or or whenever you okay. started. What got you to into the beginning? Gaming? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I grew up in a pretty like gamer friendly household. You know, my dad played games, my brothers played games, my sisters played games. So. Um, growing up, we didn't really have a gaming console. You know, I didn't get my first gaming consoles like a probably a PS One maybe until I was like twelve or something. Okay. So, um, but they grew up. Uh, my brothers and stuff like they had their own Super NES that they would be playing, but I wasn't allowed to play, and you know that kind okay. of stuff. So I, I grew up watching other people play games. So yeah. uh, naturally, you know, Twitch as a proxy was a natural to me because I grew up watching people play games and stuff. So yeah, but. It was when I was around 12 or probably around 12, maybe, maybe a little younger. It's been a while. So, but, um, my oldest brother had gotten a UO account from his best friend. Cause he was like, it's destroying my life. I have to quit playing it. You can have my account. And so my oldest brother was like, sure. I don't know what this is. I'll play. He started playing it. And, um, you know, I was watching him play as I mean, this looks fun as hell. So yeah. eventually like just destroying his life, like playing way too much. <laughs> yeah. From playing yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. Too yeah. 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 So, We've all know, been he, there. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm currently in that process. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, he, you know, he was playing it. Then my younger brother got into it too. They were on AOL legends playing and they filled up all the character slots and like, all right, you can play, but you can't play on our server because our character slots are full. So, you know, I got shipped off to my own server I played on uh, Atlantic. Okay. So, and you that probably was stole like from really... me, bro. You probably stole from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you on Atlantic too? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Um, through, uh, what is it, Renaissance or Second Age, I never can remember, up to mm. Samurai Empire and off and on. You know what I mean. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You're, on, you're on the retail for a while. It, off and on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was fun, so. It was it was good. Ultima. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, Ultima was like, I, I had played other games previous to Ultima. You know, I grew up playing JRPGs, you know, Final Fantasy, that kind of stuff. But since I never really had my own console or my, you know, my own free space or anything like that, it wasn't, I didn't really get into gaming hardcore, at least at playing it until Ultima. And that really kickstarted it a lot for me. Yeah. So just, playing ultima you know it taught me how to use a computer because i never used a computer before ultima i didn't know how to type the first person i ever encountered was that like south brit bank they said like hey or something to me and i was like <laughs> I don't how, know do how do you do that how do you do that how do you do that so you know i type like a message back it takes me like 50 minutes to type hello to him because yeah. i don't know where anything's out on my keyboard but yeah that was 
that was my start to gaming and uh the good and the bad that came with it many tears shed over you as a child mm-hmm. but a lot of laughter too so yeah yeah, yeah. That was my start it, it, it uh, the dying back then was just like the worst man you know like it was horrible you, you lose something and then you spend you it's like you know that internal clock of knowing that yeah. your corpse is going to decay or first yes. it's going to go gray and then it's going to decay. And yes. it's like, you're just racing against the clock to get to it. And then sometimes you get there and there's some guy just standing over it. Gray. <laughs> and you're like, damn it. <laughs> you can't do anything. Bastard. Cause, cause like everything you own is on that corpse. At least for me back no. then, you know, like if for I sure. put, if I put 10 K in the bank, like that day, I was like, I did good yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I spent so much time in like shame and yeah. and despise, you know, killing lizard men and Etten's killing earth elementals. You know, that was my hunting ground as like a as an eleven year old. You know, I played a swordsman. My skills were all over the place. I had no concept of min maxing or templates. Just yeah. like whatever skill rose, that's what skill I had. That's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now and I I remember you remember the UO Armory I think it was I don't know if it was an armory but like where you could look up your character on their website and it oh would yeah like, yeah and I remember when I got the veteran thing which means that you had seven hundred skill points and I was like I made it I'm a badass <laughs> I'm <laughs> you know hot like shit. Hot yeah. Shit. yeah yeah still can't sure. kill anything or anyone but no. hey at least it says veteran by my name now it does it, yeah I mean. You owe us a new player is such a crazy experience because it's like, I talk about this on stream a lot where it's like when new players like join the chat, they're like, Hey, I've never played you before. It's like, I haven't played since I was like five years old. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, it's like, man, I would give anything to get that experience again, to like just experience you mm-hmm. again for the very first time where you don't know what's happening. You don't know what's going on. You're in the graveyard fighting skeletons, trying to raise your swordsmanship as like, once you learn how to play the game, you just macro everything to seven X and it's like, yeah, some of the magic is gone because of that, and a lot of times I like really wish there was a server where that like could somehow recapture that magic. But yeah. I don't know how they would do it. It's just like that feeling, you know. I pine for it. It's such a unique like gaming experience. It, and, you know, I've I've oftentimes talked about this, thought about this. Like, I would love to play a game that you had to sign an NDA, right, a non disclosure, and mm-hmm. you 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 couldn't put information out there. I mean, obviously information would get leaked, right? But I mean, they're like, for sure. Not let's, there's not, let's yeah. make their not discords. Let's make their not wikis, you know, all that stuff. No YouTube channels or any of that. And Just had to experience it. Yeah. Like that would be yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be so sick. Used to in games, learning where something was, was, you know, me finding something out and me messaging you in game and being like, Oh my God, I just found this out. Oh, you got to go here. 100%. And and it, it is, it's exactly what you were talking about where, you know, that's, that's part of the thing of playing a new game. That's so awesome is, is just learning it all. And then inevitably mm. we all screw up and we all start Googling the best way yeah. to do it. And suddenly it's like, you're just following <laughs> that same railroad. And exactly. Exactly. <laughs> In, in some ways, in, in some ways, I think that led me to liking playing a thief in UO as well, because it's not the most efficient way to play UO. Like, right. it's profitable. You know, we make a ton of gold playing a thief. But if I was, you know, a 30 chain farmer, I would make more gold. That's just how it is. You sure. know, if I went out there on Tamer and had 30 links, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. overnight <laughs> yeah. you know once i get going anyways after i yeah. spend a trillion gold on you know command cores but yeah the point being like you know an in-game farmer is going to make more than the thief that's just how it is but being a thief is like it's not the most efficient way to make gold it's just incredibly fun it's so yeah. much fun to play a thief you just log into uo you go into a dungeon people chase you and you have fun yes. you know and you just do whatever you want. Like whatever sounds fun to you, you just do it. Like if you die, yeah. whatever, who cares? Just rearm and go to a different dungeon and find somebody else to try and get you pay your toll. So you don't steal from them. It's just like, it's just so fun. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It, it is. It's, it's just all about, for me, it's all about the chase. And back mm-hmm. when I was new to playing Ultima, 
the best times and when I'd get the heebie-jeebies, that adrenaline rush was when I'd see a PK and he'd chase me and I'd be like, oh, yeah. God. And me and Beltane <laughs> yeah. would call each, ourselves GM runners and like we just because we <laughs> thought we were really good at running and, and we were, right? And, uh, you know, this is the closest it gets me to capturing that. And, uh, you know, Outlands, b- because of the population and the fact that like special items drop you know like cores and skill scrolls and things like that sure. it creates that gameplay for a thief that you know really it, it's it, it's not there on a lot of places you know um I played, sure, on, yeah. I, I played on other servers where it's like if you're a thief then you go sit at champ spawns and you wait for power scrolls to drop and you take those and that's how you play your thief character for sure you, you don't yeah. there's really no profit yeah, that too, right? It, which Stand is fun. Stand at the weapon library and wait for people to cast. <laughs> Still the <laughs> yeah, weapon. Yeah. 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 But this is yeah. it. It creates all those epic chases, and suddenly it goes from one person chasing you to two to twelve, and then it's just like you start giggling and having a good time, and yeah, then all yeah, of a sudden yeah. you die, and it's like that was so much fun, <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's exactly. Just, it's just great, but it's man. so good. What, it's like I get that. Uh, I get that question a lot on stream where it's like, why don't you use disguise kits? And that's literally yeah. why, because the chase is the most fun part of UO. Like being mm-hmm. chased is so much fun. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it just is, you know, it gets the adrenaline going. And like when you get a clutch wall off or you get a cool mm-hmm. escape and chat goes crazy and you're yeah. like just running for your life with the loot. It's just like, yeah, it's the greatest feeling. It's so fun. Uh-huh. It's just, yeah, it's great. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. Where, where did, uh, let's, let's, let's back up a minute. Where, where did the name Sanguine Jester come from? Like, <laughs> so it was kind of just, it kind of just came to me one day and I was like, a lot of people are always like, um, why, why is your name Sanguine? Cause you don't really seem to be like into blood or anything. You don't have anything blood themed in your room. Why is it Sanguine? And it's like, well, sanguine has two different meanings. The other one is that even in dire times, you are an optimistic and help, like hopeful person. You're always in a good mood. Like no matter what's going on around you, no matter if you've got losses in your family, you know, no matter what it is, no matter how tragic it is, you're able to stay in a good mood and stay optimistic. And that's kind of the person that I am. I'm just always, you know, mm-hmm. I like to say some people suffer from like um, depression and then they have like a chemical imbalance that makes them, you know, perpetually unhappy and they need, mm-hmm. you know, medicine to like help readjust their chemicals in their brain, et cetera, et cetera. And I always like to say that I have the opposite of depression. It's like, it's like a positive mental illness where I can't be sad. Like I just yeah. can't be sad. I don't experience it very much. And uh, so that's why I came up with sanguine. I like to think I'm like a generally inter- kind of entertaining, at least to try to be uh, even though I couldn't tell you a joke if you asked me to. Yeah. So that's where Jester came from. I just like, I think a, a thief Jester is just a funny concept. So I came up with it like two years ago. Yeah. I was just like, Let's go with that. No, I like it. And and you're right, man. I mean, I, I too try to be as optimistic and mm-hmm. look at the bright side of, of most anything that I can. Right. I mean, obviously there's for some sure. things you can't really be like, well, at least, you know, but, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. you know, but I, I totally understand exactly what you're talking about. And, Man, it just, I mean, it, you just go through life so much better and happy and all around it when you just don't focus on the negative and you just focus mm. on positive things. And um, for sure, I think it also opens up better connections as well. Um, so there's there's a lot of good things to say yeah. about that trait for sure. Sanguine, you know, I've I've uh, now that you say that that is I remember it that that is a second meaning for it because yeah. sanguine also people always associate with blood. So that's, that's really cool, man. I like that. Yeah. Um, that was how, that's how I came up with it. So I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it resonates with you on some level. Yeah. hundred percent. Were you, were you always a thief playing UO? I mean, I mean, <laughs> what kind of player were you when you started playing? And then like, as far as play style, how did it kind of evolve throughout the years into now? Personally, I've only seen you play a thief, so <laughs> which is the I best was, way to play. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I was not a thief for a total of one year of my time playing you. Yeah. So the rest of those 20 years was me playing a thief, yeah. yeah. Um, I started playing UO in around 2001. So Tremel had already came out when I started playing on retail. Um, 
and you know i was a total trammy uh like i lived in tramel so um it was i didn't really get that like pvp experience outside of like when the test centers were live on retail and you know everybody was in buxton <laughs> and then the hillers were just covered in poison fields and it, that was like my exposure to pvp was just going to the test centers and like seven xing a mage and that's how i learned like where to pvp and you know if you can call that pvp it's mostly just spamming some spell with the group of people that are with you yeah (laughs) but it was incredibly fun so that was like outside of that once i moved on from retail i quit playing retail like right when aos came out i played it for like a month i was like damn this sucks Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) i hated aos um so i quit playing retail when aos came out and it was probably like a year or two that I didn't play UO after that. So I'd only played it for like a year and then I quit. Mm -hmm. Um, And eventually I found a sphere server called age of mundane. Okay. And I spheres where you you cast and run, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you like click your spells before they're casted, you instantly fizzle. Yeah. It's totally different than run UO servers like outlands. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was like totally different than playing on retail as well. I was like, damn, this shit feels weird as hell. Um, but, you know, I stuck it out. I didn't know there was other options. And uh, I played that for like a couple of months. And eventually I discovered, I want to say UO Gamers Hybrid. Um, and I played on Hybrid for most of probably like 10 years. I played on Hybrid a, for a very long time. And then like UO Gamers came out with a couple of other servers that were really fun. One of them was like a whole new, they had their own map and I played that one for a while. You know, there was not really, everyone was kind of like leveling their, starting out on a new server that's popular is like a very unique experience because everyone's yeah. like trying to figure out stuff. It's like, I can imagine it was the same on Outlands when it first launched. Everyone was like, whoa, this map, what's happening? And uh, so it, that was a fun experience. That was like one of the most fun experiences for me playing on that server with their own custom map. But, you know not to cast any shade or anything, but the UO gamers leadership, not the greatest. Uh, <laughs> I've been told so, that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the greatest. So, it changed uh, hands. Like ownership changed hands pretty constantly. Is that right? From what I understand? Yeah. There's also just a lot of false promises like, yeah. okay, we're coming back for real. We're going to fix the server. And then they just disappear immediately after that for like years yeah. at a time. So it was just like, it was on life support for a really long time. But yeah, yeah. Eventually I moved on from that. I found, found outlands i want to say in like 2018 so it was shortly after it launched it's yeah. probably like three or four months after it launched i found outlands and uh i think we started around the same from... time then yeah 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 Rose like right history. after the cavernim Sorry. uh i don't remember if cavernim was out or not i can't remember yeah but the the entire time outside of the sphere server and retail i played a thief i rolled a thief on hybrid it was with disarm thief it was actually my brother's character he had made a disarm thief and I didn't want to do the thing where I waited 48 hours to join the thieves guild or you have to have like 48 hours logged in. I was like, I just want to play a thief now. So I just like logged into my brother's thief account and I played it way more than he ever did. He was like, <laughs> you can pretty much have that character. Uh, his name Lyric the Brigand. Um, Lyric the Brigand. So, yeah. So if you guys ever saw Lyric the Brigand on hybrid, well, that was me. Great. <laughs> I was a disarm thief and we did tons of trolley stuff on that character. Just like in DeLuca, there's like the, I don't know if you remember the old map very much, but in DeLuca, there was the Savage Camp right outside of town. And if you have like Savage Camp paint on, of course, like Savages won't attack you. So our, oh, yeah. the thief the thief would wear like full clothing so you couldn't see his skin. And uh-huh. we would just like disarm thief people. And they would chase us. We'd run straight into the Savage Camp with wall casted. They'd get in there. We'd wallow in and get a <laughs> the Savages. So we were always doing stuff like that and just yeah, yeah. Disarm Thief was like that was my shit. I was so yeah. so much fun playing a Disarm Thief. And when I came to Outlands, that was like the hardest adjustment for me because you know obviously the first character I rolled on Outlands was the Thief and uh, named Kappa at the time. Eventually, I changed the name though, but. Uh, We'd roll. Or, I'd just roll around on that character and uh, have to adjust to the fact that there's no disarm thieving. But I quickly realized I was like, oh, there's actually just a ton of stuff to actually still on the server. I don't even care that disarm thieving is gone because yep. you know there's cores, there's like treasure maps, there's there's just so many things you can still on Outlands that makes playing a thief actually profitable and fun. You're not just trying to steal people's weapons because you know Vinks are like the best you're gonna get nine times out of ten on other yep. servers. But yeah, so yeah. yeah. 
a little bit of a tangent, but pretty much no, the thief my entire time. <laughs> that's great. I mean, it, it, it's it's funny. So like on for me on retail, I played a thief. I wasn't ever really good at it, but you know, I would get people to chase me, and that's really all I cared about. And um, for sure. then um, on you owe forever, I played a thief, and I had this terrible, awesome script that I just push and hold the button down, <laughs> and it would just it'd snoop into every single bag of anybody around me and pull out mm. a power scroll or a uh, relic like Damn. instantly. It was oh really God. stupid. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what I did. And I got rich from mm. it. And then coming here, you know, this, this shard has so much, uh, coming to Outlands has so much like PVM side to it that I just really fell sure. in love with it. And I played that for the longest time. But I always was like, man, I miss playing a thief. Like I miss the chases and, and everything. And so, you know, when, when, uh, you know, they did the whole red hand, gray hand thing, I was like, well, this is fun. And I was like, yeah, I want to level this thief codex. And then I was like, okay, I want to steal. And I just fell in love with it all over again. And it's like, I mean, I, I think I went like two years, uh, I don't know. Has it been two years? I don't know. I went for a very long time uh, where I didn't even switch back over into my PVM stuff. I was just only <laughs> exclusively stealing just because it was so much fun. And like it, it changed the whole game for me because of exactly what you said. There's there's so much to steal, so much potential to get people to chase you and run them through monsters, get them killed, wall them. Yeah. It's, it's just fun, man. It's just it's a blast. But, you know, mm. um, it's, it's great. Tell us, tell us like a, a memorable story of like the early days, like just, just something you did something really newbie ish or I don't know, man, just, just some, some <laughs> okay. kind of funny, funny story. Uh, you know. Okay. I got a story for you. Okay. Right. So when I was fairly new to you, I was still on retail, complete noob. Like I said, total trammy. I grew up in tram. I never left tram. Um, and it was it was fun. Like I didn't know any other way. I didn't even really know about Faluka at the time because you know, that wasn't uh that was just not a thing in my mind at the time at 11 and I only played in Tremel. So eventually my brother had told me that you can go to this place called Faluka and it's like so much more fun and you can like, people will attack you and it's like, you know, it's just fun. You can loot people's bodies. I'm like, okay, I was like, sure, let's try that. So, you know, I, I hit the moon gate, went to you, Faluka, on my desert ostard, looking totally sick with, like, probably, like, a power scimitar or something like that in my hand. <laughs> and I'm hot shit. Yep. And, uh, you know, I step out of the moon gate. I walk, <laughs> I, I walk literally not even off screen, probably, of the moon gate. Instantly get attacked by a <laughs> red. <laughs> and I have no clue what's happening. Yeah. And, you know, I die, obviously, because yeah. I have no clue what's happening. I'm in total shock. I'm 11 years old. And he kills my kill, kills my desert ostard. Uh, I go get revived. I come back. He's looted everything off my body. Yeah. I'm totally dry looted. And I just, on the spot, just start crying. I, just I was going to say, I just wanted to cry. I guarantee it. I just started, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just started crying. I was so sad. I was like, yeah. I just lost everything I've been working for, for like God knows how <laughs> long. My pet's dead. My awesome desert ostrich's dead. Yeah. Like I just lost everything. Yeah. So my mom was like, why are you crying? And I like tried to explain it to her and she's like, okay, you're taking this game too serious. You can't play for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't so, get it. <laughs> yeah. Just didn't get it. That's yeah. good. Was it? Was, yeah. Do you remember? Was it you Moongate by chance? I remember that yeah, was always was like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was you Moongate. Yeah. <laughs> that literally uh, didn't even get off screen of it and got attacked. Yeah. <laughs> and died. So that, that uh, was the extent Brit, of me and being a Faluka. That's good, man. That is good. Yeah. I I always wanted to just hang out in Faluka just because I was like, man, I just wanted to be so cool. Like yeah. to me, being cool in Ultima Online was like the most important thing and that you know i'd have the <laughs> the coolest clothes that were not blessed right and uh mm. you know i'd spend so much money on the at the tailor shop just creating the perfect outfit and i just perfect outfit yeah you know no shirt short pants <laughs> sandals <Yep. laughs> afro with a bandana that was my favorite yeah, yeah. you feel like a real pvp -er. 
but all yeah. I could do was Vassort play in court four for days, and that was it. I know. That, <laughs> that, that, that's still me, so I'm with you. Yeah. There you go. There <laughs> that's you still go. Me. That's why I just run from people and cast wall when they're near mobs. <laughs> Best way to do it, man. The monsters are your pets, right? Tamers they have are. tame pets. We have the dungeons. Exactly. But that's right. We have untamed pets. Turns up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Little, little pharaoh. But. So what what made you decide you know to start streaming did it was your first stream uo i mean what what walks through that so hmm, have to get a bit into the weeds on this one i started streaming tldr because there was a lot of beef shade in the discord at the time and i was like damn these people don't get it <laughs> and so i was like i gotta like stream this stuff so people understand like you don't just have to grief people as a thief or you don't have to just like piss people off and troll people and like do things to, you know, make people angry at you. Like I have, I, I started streaming like a year and a half ago and my first stream was Outlands. And I was just like, I just, I just woke up one morning and I was just like, I'm just going to stream. I downloaded OBS, turned on UO and I just turned the stream on and people watched and I was like, sweet. But my motivation was purely because there was so much thief shade in the discord. There was like people always like going on about like thieves are terrible. Thieves are bad for the game. Thieves are just like psychopaths and sociopaths IRL. Mm -hmm. And there's just like, you still see some of that rhetoric in the discord and it's, you know, it's whatever. But meanwhile, you got the two most positive people sitting here talking. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like you don't, you don't have to be like, a giant piece of shit to play a thief. It's just fun. Like if you've never played a thief, play a thief. You will yep. laugh your ass off. I guarantee you. It's so much fun. It's so funny. Yep. Um, and you can be a kind hearted thief. Like you can give shit back to people after you steal it. You can do whatever you want as a thief. You know, you're your own person, but yeah, that, that was how I got into streaming. It was just, I wanted to like show people. And if people wanted to watch, like they could be like, Oh wow. Being a thief does seem like fun. And yeah, I just wanted there to be more thief players on outlands. So that, yeah. that's that's why i started streaming mission accomplished right <laughs> i hope so. so i hope so yeah yeah but i you know i i do know what you're talking about um and there is still quite a bit of rhetoric of like oh thieves thieves serve absolutely no purpose to this game and it's like well no that that is what this game is like yeah you know the 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 what is it uh community the bickering back and forth the interactions and stuff like yeah. you know a, a pk kills somebody and takes everything a thief reaches in grabs one item and screws around with them i think that is like a huge thing that just keeps that wheel of uh i don't know community going i guess otherwise it's just i mean i don't know if you've ever played on a pvm only shard and you know some people really like those and that's great you know everybody can play whatever they want but for me that's boring man you're just sitting there like killing a monster mindlessly (laughs) and it just becomes just this rhetorical boringness and there's no risk at all there's plenty of reward but there's no risk and i think that thieves and pks really uh, add that value of having to look over your shoulder or, you know, I, I'm not going to go down there and full avarite plate mail. Like, why would I do that? For sure. <laughs> For know? sure. And For sure. It's it's just so important. But so you you started on UO. Have you streamed? Well, I do know you've streamed other games, but, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. like any other games? Yeah, I guess tell us about the other game that you've streamed. Games. If there's I mean, before. I've mostly only streamed UO. Like, I wouldn't mind streaming other stuff. The problem is, it's like, it's very easy to get into like a comfort zone of like streaming one thing and you're like, you get in this like, this mindset of like, all right, I'm good at this. I know how to do it. And it's fun. I enjoy doing it. And it's like, so when I have other games that come out, you know, like Baldur's Gate 3 comes out and I'm playing it off stream like crazy. This game's super fun. And I'm like, man, I could have streamed this, but it's like, would my audience be receptive to that? Like, and there's like these kind of like meta things that I think about, about streaming. Cause you know, I do do it for a living. Like it's my livelihood. So there are these like sort of 
is it good for analytics to stream this stuff? Are sponsors going to look at this kind of stuff and be like, eh? And so I try to factor that stuff in when I'm choosing games I want to stream. So as a result, I try not to stream other games that much unless it's something I think that people enjoy watching me play. And for instance, like GTA is something I was yeah. like, they might not like it initially, but if they just watch it, they're going to find it funny as, you know, funny as hell. Yeah. And I, I think that's why a lot of people watch me play a thief is because it's funny as hell. So I was like, they'll definitely probably enjoy GTA too. And I think that's been true. So I do enjoy uh, streaming GTA as well because they, uh, so many people come into chat now and they're like, you know, I've been, I just put in my application to play on the server. I'm playing yeah. it. Like, are you going to play more GTA soon? And that kind of stuff makes me feel good. Cause it's like, okay, I didn't, you know, fuck over my community by playing some garbage. They didn't want to watch. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of stuff just feels good. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've streamed really is just Ultima and GTA so far. I think with GTA RP servers like that, you know, it, it, it correlates a lot, especially just because of the interactions that happen in UO. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, sure. I, I do know also, you know, like I thought the same thing. I was like, man, we were playing Baldur's Gate. I was like, I could be playing this on stream, but, you know, sometimes it, it's a completely different game for one. And then two, it's just like, uh, you know, sometimes story driven games are more fun yes. to just sit there and just put mm. your face in when and nobody be around and just like get immersed, delve into it. Yeah, get immersed into yeah. it. And and, you know, I've I've had to realize that for myself, because there is plenty of times where I've been like, man, I'd really like to play this game. But is it really something that I want to stream? Well, yeah, no. And so I completely skip out on the game. And then in the entire time, I'm thinking like, man, I would have really liked to play that game. And and I think it's, you know, now I've finally accepted, like, it's okay to play a game off stream and, and enjoy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it, it it is tough because you do get into that mindset where, like, anytime you're playing a game, it's like, damn, I could be streaming this right yeah. now. Like, I could yeah. be, you know, working on something here. And it's like, because when your hobby and, like, something that you do as, like, a financial uh, out as well, where it's like it intertwines with each other. And it it kind of every time you are playing something in the back of your head, you're like, damn, I could be streaming this. Why am I not streaming this? I should be streaming yeah. this. And you kind of just you do have to shut that part of your brain off. It's like it's OK not to stream stuff. It's OK not to like want to play this on stream because some things are just more fun off stream. And it's like when you're reading chat and responding to people, it's like it's hard to get immersed. And then there's there's like you know, when you're playing story driven games, you have people that will like backseat or they'll like spoil stuff. And then, yeah. so there's like that kind of stuff too. So there's just certain games for me that are just more fun to play off stream. I do intend to play a lot more stuff uh, on stream in the future, just cause it's kind of like, fuck it. I would rather yeah. just stream what I want to stream and not stream what I don't want to stream. Yeah. And so that's going to be my approach in the future for sure. Cause I just want to, sure. I just want to stream more stuff. It's more fun, but yeah. That said, you will always be my home. You it's just so much fun. Yeah, for me, I always like when I do stream another game, I'll do it for you know a week, a couple weeks, or a certain day or whatever. And you know, it's fun. I enjoy it, but it's just Ultima and stealing specifically is just it's like the best thing I've ever played yeah. and and streamed, especially because it is. It's like you said. I mean, you're like pulling off these crazy escapes, and then it's just like. It feels good. Yeah. And then yeah. in other games, I just, I just don't, I just feel like I'm just grinding away in the other game. Mm -hmm. And I just don't get sure. that same, like, yeah, yay, as much. So yeah. it's hard to, but GTA, you know, Shedrick, he's, he's like the coolest <laughs> guy ever, man. He's like this yeah. California, <laughs> like long haired Hollister model wearing you know uh board shorts and slinging burgers man tell us about him <laughs> i mean shredrick is a funny idea that came to me purely because um i was playing i was speaking of the previous topic i was playing another game on stream i was playing dive the diver uh dave the diver which is a phenomenal game by the way if you never played it it's awesome super fun it's, um and you basically play this uh, guy who just like dives into the ocean and catches fish for a sushi restaurant and 
when I was reading the dialogue for the character, I would like, I just like, for some reason, I was like, ah, he's got a surfer accent for sure. So I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I read it. And then chat loved the voice. Chat was always like, you know, laughing at the voice. So I was like, when I got into GTA RP, I was like, I've got the perfect idea for a character that chat's going to love. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how Shredrick was born. Basically, it was just, I played Dave the Diver. Uh, I did a surfer voice. Chat loved it. And I was like, damn, I'd like to make a character like this because the voice is super fun to do. It cracks me up. And um, it really is like this almost level of, <laughs> I don't want to say meth acting because I don't want to be Shredrick. <laughs> it's like when I go into like Shredrick mode, my mannerisms become Shredrick. Like my thoughts become Shredrick. Like everything is just complete potato. Yeah. It's just, I just completely like that part of my brain. That's a filter. That's like, don't say that. I just like, turn that off on Shredrick and I like <laughs> grab the other knob that says like IQ and drop that down to like 10 <laughs> and, just, like, and then just whatever comes out is what comes out on Shredrick. So it's just yeah. a really fun character. It's super it, fun to play. I, so I did, I, I put in my application there that was like, you know, a while back ago there, there, all those servers with the applications, they're, they're really slow. I mean, cause everybody wants to play on them. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's just like, all right, population went down a hundred. So let's go ahead and, Put in a hundred, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's pretty much how it works. And, and, and for so sure. take some time, but uh, you know, I am looking forward to hopefully, you know, getting approved on there. I had uh, got approved on a Twitch RP something. I don't know, whatever server a long time ago. And uh, I made a character named uh, Cletus and he, uh, <laughs> he, he, okay. he, he had this red uh, mullet and uh, wore wife beater shirt and coveralls. <laughs> And he rode around on a Harley. And I mean, he looked oh. ragged, dude. He looked real ragged. And uh, he just hit on every girl that he saw. And oh, my it was God. Just, it, was, it was a lot of fun, man. I just hit on every it's girl. It's so fun. And it just, you know, most of them told me to, you know, kick rocks. But some of them would play <laughs> along. And, and yeah. you know, like, it got a little like, oh, shit. Like, this feels Can a I little weird. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, my girlfriend's going to yeah. walk in and, uh -huh. and hear this and be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you know, it was, uh, it, it's fun though. I mean, it goes in different ways. My, my favorite thing of watching you was, was actually when you were in the strip club. Well, no, there's two <laughs> stories I want to tell. We'll start with the strip club. Oh. And you, I don't know if you like got a part-time job after your main job or what, but you're, you're over there, you're dancing. And, you know, these even old men in suits are giving you, you know, tips and you're just you're just twerking your butt, dude. And uh, all of a sudden, three people come running in and just start shooting this place up. And there you are just still twerking. You're like, Shaw, dude. Shaw. Like, and it was just like, what is going on? Then people come and they pick up the dead people on stretchers and walk them out and stuff. And it's just like you're just still twerking. And, and it was uh, it was just hilarious man i mean i don't know it's so good <laughs> and and the old guy in the suit was just sitting there still just watching you give <laughs> stuff in the dollar bills in <laughs> yeah yeah and um yeah that was fucking hilarious an another one is uh you're you're sitting there you're you're slinging burgers and you're talking to this guy about he, he wants a job and he's like oh i can be a bodyguard i can be your bodyguard i can be security mm. And uh, he, he, this guy comes in and he, he wants to, he, he has to take off his mask, right? It's like a mm -hmm. rule. You have to not yeah, yeah, yeah. And he you won't take it off. Criminal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're like, you know, everybody with a mask has always been a criminal. And it goes yeah. on for like five minutes. And suddenly he just pulls out this machine gun <laughs> and the bodyguard just ducks down. And you're like, what the fuck, bro? Go get him. You're the, you're the security guard. And he finally gets out and he just like, you know, Goldberg, Goldberg spears him and yeah. into traffic. And just <laughs> he like flies so, in the air. So good. <laughs> it, it just, I just think that it's so cool because that, that's where I think that like that game really correlates well with the thieving streams. You know what I mean? And so that's why it was so easy for, you know, the UO community to kind of transition and still watch that. Cause mm. man, the UO community just loves UO and you yeah. know, like, look, you're a wonderful streamer and, and, and everybody loves you, 
but there also is a threshold and you're well above it, but there is a threshold of basically like if you're streaming UO people watch, you know what I mean? Like, and then, yeah, for sure. And then it's like, but that sometimes people will play a different game and it's like, they go from 20 viewers to two. And it's like, mm-hmm. because they, they love UO and there's nothing wrong with that. But I do know that the GTA RP and especially the style that you're playing, it just transitions so well that it's, you're still getting the same entertainment, just different platform, if you will. Different so, way. Yeah. Yeah. But I personally have really enjoyed Shedrick. So I will put my, uh, my, my note in the basket of yes, more Shedrick, please. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I want to play more. I do. Yeah. I do. You put in your application on Onyx too, right? That's where you put yours in? Yep. Perfect. Yeah. I would love yeah. for you to get on the server. RPing yeah. with you. Yeah. Would love it. Sounds we'll, awesome. We'll both be up there on the polls twerking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dodging those bullets. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 100%. Um, yeah. But, you know, back back to Outlands, um, you know, I I like your events, I guess you could call them. So, like, you've done rag to riches um you know you 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 do a lot of 24 hour streams what is it like one a month right uh, well yeah, it's a, a subathon month. and subathon and once a month yeah every sub is an extra adds to three the time depends on the tier if uh, tier one is three minutes tier two is six minutes and tier three yeah. is 15 minutes so and you how often would you say you you make it to the 24 hour i mean it, it happens pretty regularly right We've hit 24 hours three times, I think, and we hit 30 okay. hours once. <laughs> oh my god! After yeah. we hit 30 hours, I was like, "Okay, we're capping Cap. it to 24 hours." <laughs> yeah, because so, 30, 30 hours, man, I was I was a yeah. zombie the next day. I've done but one 24 hour stream, one, and it's the only one I'll ever do. Um, I think after like hour 16, I was just like, it hits. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And then, of course, at the end of 24, like, you go and you lay down and it's daytime. And you're just like, yeah. for me, I was like, I'm so tired, but I just can't sleep. Mm. (laughs) And and it took me a little bit to get sleep. But um, that is cool. So uh, tell us about Rag to Riches. (laughs) Rag to Riches is interesting because... When I, I can't remember, it's that was like a, uh, I did my first Rags to Riches challenge when I first started streaming. It was like a year and a half ago, approximately. Um, so I can't remember the exact details and what led up to it, but I feel like somebody in my chat was like, somebody else did this challenge in it. And I was like, and they were like, and you should do it. And I was like, hmm, how could I work that into like something I like doing instead? <laughs> and so from there, I think it was like, I think it was Alchemaster. I think they were, they were like the one that suggested it. I think that was their name. It's been like a year and a half, so I could be wrong, but I think they suggested it. And I just like, I, I was like, this would also played into that part of me where the people were like, thought these are just trolls and they were like, weren't profitable. So I was like, okay, well, this is a really good way of both like being like an entertaining challenge and like to see if I can do it. Cause I have no clue. Yep. And to like also show like, well, if I can do this and if I can do it in a short amount of time, then it's like proof that thieves are just fun and profitable to play. Uh, so it kind of just like there's a lot of overlap with like my goals and like what I wanted from streaming and how I wanted it to like function, how I wanted my stream to be. It's like a fun thing to do. So there's like there's just a bunch of like the Venn diagram was like 100 percent overlapped on things I wanted. So after after thinking about it um, quite a bit. And I just one day I was like, all right, this is what we're doing. We're, yeah. This is the challenge for like the next however long it takes. I'm just going to play this brand new thief, which uh, which I guess I should explain if you guys don't know what the Rags to Riches challenge is. <laughs> I kind of skipped that part. Rags to Riches challenge was this this challenge that I'm almost positive I plagiarized from somebody else. Uh, it was somebody else that did it before me. I just don't remember who it was. I could be totally making this up, but in my memory. It feels like I got this idea from somebody else. So I'm just going to full clarity. <laughs> I don't think I came up with this idea 100% entirely. It's uh, all good. Really um, <laughs> There's no copyright. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag thief things. Yeah. But um, it's this challenge where I made a brand new thief character. And 
I wanted to see how long it would take us to raise X amount of gold uh, on a brand new character. The goal started out, it was like 3 million. We were going to see how long it would take us to reach 3 million gold on a brand new character with literally nothing to our name. We didn't have a, we didn't have a bank or when well, we had a bank, we didn't have a house. You know, we didn't have anything. We didn't have a rune book. You know, it was a brand new character. Like if you had just started Outlands, how fast could you do this? Our goal was 3 million. And as the challenge went on, the stream loved it so much. They were like, this is fucking awesome. So I was like, okay, well, let's up the amount of gold. Let's bring it to 5 million. And um, the end goal was to get 5 million because that's we were going to spend that 5 million to buy a house with. I was like, yep. our end goal, get a house. And then we gave the house away to some random person and uh, on stream. That's cool. Um, so it was like, it took us 23 days to hit 5 million gold on a brand new thief. Yeah. Um, and that was with us doing like daily giveaways, like constant giveaways. Cause every time we hit like sub goals, we give away stuff we've stolen. So, so we, there were some was, days where we like lost gold. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, so it was from your own pool that you were still yeah. that day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that like some days we were just straight up losing gold. So in total, yeah. we made like probably close to like 16 million gold before we ended the challenge. Yeah. Uh, so we're making like almost a million gold a day on a brand new thief. <laughs> that's a, I think that's another one of the fun things on playing a thief is like some days are just garbage and it's like you can't get away to save your I mean literally to save your life. Yeah. Um you can't get away and you can't make a steal or you know anything. And then there's other days where it's just like there's something right in the water and you're making all the good steals, you're making all the good escapes. Everybody's got loot in their bag and you're just like yeah, you know. Yeah. And um I think that for me is what makes it fun because I mean that's one of 100%. the million things. But like y- you know, you 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 come off of a low right into a high and then it's just like yeah. right back into eating humble pie again the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. like <laughs> Yeah. You know. I it, mean it, Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I get excited talking about you all. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, man. It's exciting, especially stealing, because it is. It's just, yeah. It's such an adrenaline rush, and then it's like shit. I suck today. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's okay yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, I, I've talked about that exact thing on stream so much. Like one of the most fun parts about paying a thief over a PVM or one. No shame if you enjoy PVPing or PVMing. It's just not for me. I don't enjoy it that much. You know, I've had a PVM or on Outlands for four years. It's got two links unlocked. So it's like, I've barely PVM'd. I just don't enjoy it that much. But if you enjoy it, you know, that's whatever. But one of the things about thieving that makes it so much fun to me is the variance. Because when you log into your PVMer, you can kind of like figure out how much gold per hour you're going to make, assuming you don't get like a rare drop or something like that, or you don't get PK'd 50 times back to back. Yeah, which is very likely to happen. I would say, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. you know, for the most part, you can factor in how much gold you're going to make an hour generally. And on a PV or on a thief, you have like no clue. You, nope. So you you just grab a still and you just made like a million gold, or you yep. just search people for three hours straight. And you literally find an arcane scroll and that's it. Yep. You know? <laughs> yep. Like two weeks ago, every single stream two weeks ago, we were making like one to two million a day easily if not more and then the week after that monday i probably made like 200k and i died like 50 times doing the same yeah. exact thing same exact dungeon down in uh, ages four like yeah and that's just how being a thief is sometimes you yeah. just you just suck ass and that's all yeah. there is to yeah. it the monsters attack you instead of them yeah uh you know the dexter that's chasing you is better at sticking on you than than yeah. normal or you know like it, there there's just so many different factors whereas playing your pvm or man i go into new Cero, i know exactly what i'm fighting you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fighting the same dragons the same demons that do the exact same thing i'm gonna say <laughs> all guard me on my pets they're gonna take yeah. the hits and i'm just gonna sit back and throw my flame strikes and they're gonna die and i'm gonna loot their gold and you know make 100k an hour or whatever it is and, and there's that but just like you said man on a thief it's like oh shit i stole a command core there's 200k but then yep. I stole an arcane scroll for the next three hours. So yeah. I you know, <laughs> made less than what I would have farming, but yeah. it's still, it's fun, you know? Um, it's more fun though. It's so much yeah. more fun to yeah. me. Me too. Me too. It's, it's night day difference. I, I enjoy PVMing. Um, I won't say I don't, but mm. I will say that I can't do it like for long periods of time. 
um, you know, some of these guys, props to them, but I mean, they'll just sit there and, you know, PVM Grind 10 hours out. a day. And it's just like, when I do a PVM stream, man, by, by the end of it, I'm like exhausted. Like, uh, if you know, the, the hip lantern event, I farmed my ass off cause I wanted to get as many hip lanterns as I could. I was, I was purposely like trolling people just to like break up the monotony. And yeah. I, I, I like <laughs> would tell people to leave. This is my spawn and stuff. And like, you know, just yeah. kill their pets. So I'd go gray and they would attack me. And, you know, I could have probably got more hip lanterns, but I just had to, you know, I had to break it up a little bit because I, I enjoy the the thrill of dying. <laughs> yeah, know? for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, but mm. wh- go ahead. I, I was just going to say, like, I, I do enjoy PVMing. It, it is fun in short bursts. Like I used to enjoy team mapping quite a lot. Team mapping was fun with friends and stuff like that. And, you know, PVMing is a lot more cathartic like you can really kind of just have something on your other monitor that you're watching yeah. while you're farming it's very like a chill experience um so there is like something to be said about that it's much more relaxing if you've had a long day yeah you know, and you just want to come home and just brain off and just grind out some mobs you know that could be fun so I, you know i get it yeah but i feel like streaming a pvm is so much harder there because i feel like people just fuck with you constantly <laughs> like snipe you and just kill you on repeat like get your loot easily i just i feel like that would happen way more as a thief if somebody stream snipes it's just content for the stream it's just funny because i want to be chased anyways it, so. yo 100 100 percent. and i so two things to that one is i've always been in the the side of the table that it's like I'm sh- and, and I said it last night even, but like I'm streaming a PvP game. I'm mm-hmm. broadcasting to the world or however few people watch an Ultima online stream, right? But, um, you know, <laughs> Surprisingly uh, more than I would have thought. I, yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, either way, like I'm broadcasting my location. And mm-hmm. even when I'm on my PVM or I'm a red hand. I don't switch over to, you know, gray hand or unload. I just always red hand. And I publicly say that all the time. But so it's like, it's shame on me for broadcasting my location in a PVP game. So if I do get sniped, like, I I don't feel like I should get streamer privilege because I'm streaming and people shouldn't use whatever to their advantage to kill me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Mm. okay. Stream sniping is not that cool. But at the same time, it's like, I'm the one to blame, not, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it, that's just where my boat is on it. But although surprisingly, I don't, you know, there's times where I'm like, that was obviously a snipe, but I don't like verbally say that or whatever. Yeah. yeah, uh, for um, sure. Because I've noticed that the streamers that have done that in the past, they don't end up streaming much longer after they rage because the people who are sniping are actually, they're doing that to get a reaction out of the streamer. So when the streamer is like, you small pecker, you know, whatever. (laughs) And then it's like, so that, that means the sniper wins and he's going to continue to do it. And then that invites other snipers. And then all of a sudden they're not, they don't stream anymore. And it's like, what? just just roll it off man like but it it yeah. never really it doesn't happen as often as as i would have thought it did i just think that a lot of people are quick to claim like oh i got pk that was a snipe like yeah what <laughs> so yeah i'll pre- i'll preface by saying i don't think streaming is hard it's not hard to do you just you know it, it it can be mentally exhausting to be on constantly, but it's not like, it's not hard. But one thing about streaming is if you want to do it long-term, you have to have thick skin. Like you have, yeah. you can't, you can't let people get under your skin. People that are stream sniping you, people that are flaming you, people in chat saying some abrasive shit. Like you can't, you have to learn how to see that kind of stuff and turn it into content and make it funny or just like skirt past it. Like you can't yeah. stick with that kind of stuff because People, in my experience, at least when I'm watching streamers, when they get into those kind of like headspaces, yeah. it kind of just kills the vibe of the stream for me. And I'm just like, eh, this is a weird atmosphere. Yeah. So I like 
I personally don't want to be in streams where people are like being negative, like mega toxic or, you know, negative and that kind of shit. Yeah. So, you know, I just try to have that same energy when I'm streaming, you know, if people are being toxic, you know, if you want to have bands in the chat with me, I'm totally on board as long as you don't say some hyper offensive shit. Um, you know, if you want to say some, you know, dumb shit in game, like yeah. dying traffic, you know, we get that a lot, but it's yeah. just like, you know, it's whatever, who cares if your stream sniping, who cares? It's like, that's just part of the game. People are going to do it. Yeah. Um, and if you, if it bothers you, then don't stream or put yeah. a delay on. I would rather talk to my chat than have a delay. So it's just like, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that that's another thing. I've seen some other streams die because they're like, Oh, I've got a five minute delay. Sorry. I'll be right with you. I just got tired yeah. of getting PK'd and it's like, I guess you got tired of talking to your chat too, but yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, 100%. like, and, and to me, that's, that is like chat is my favorite part. That is I mean, why I, I, I love stealing. Don't get me wrong, but I, I more so just really like just seeing the chat go and trying to keep mm -hmm. up with it and just, you know, catching up with people and, 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 you know, it, it's fun, man. I just enjoy that interaction. That's the social aspect of it. That, and, and that's why we all love UO so much is because of the social aspect. This adds another social aspect mm. to it. And I, I think that's huge uh, for sure. But to your point, hundred percent right man like there's been many times where somebody has came in and they either try to try are trying to troll me in the chat or try to troll me in the game and you turn it into content and it's ironic but eight times out of ten they become some of the best viewers on your, yeah your, in your stream like for sure they aren't trolls anymore it's like yeah some somehow they just get it and then they're like happy to be there it's it's weird but it, it is weird and and to that as well like that's honestly how i've met some of my best friends in real life too like some of the people that i was closest to in real life were people that i had like literal fist fights with at <laughs> one point in my life it's just like there's something about like being forged in the fires where you get to see like somebody's like inner like workings or something i don't know it's just but yeah you're right you're totally right like a lot of times it does work out that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. Quite a bit. Um, so you've done rags to riches, what, three times you said? Successfully. Twice. Yeah. Twice. We did, um, we did our second one. Um, I think it was in September or October. So it was pretty recently. That one took us, I think 20 days. And when you raise 13 million. Yeah. So. And you, you do like roughly seven, seven, eight hour streams, right? Normally around six. Six. Okay. Six. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's perfect. then. that's, uh, that's impressive, <laughs> but <laughs> it is, it is true though. I mean, you can make money as a thief, you know, mm. that's a very valid uh, template to play as a new player. If you want to, you know what I mean? You're yeah. just, don't be upset if you die. But the cool thing is, is you don't really need anything to be a thief. Yeah, either. You don't need I, mean, anything. I mean, you could do a full loadout like for 400 gold. So <laughs> And that was like the, one of the things I wanted to showcase on the Rags to Riches Challenge was that you literally don't need anything. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. You just get in there, go yeah. steal some stuff, and then fence your shit and you're rich. Right. Just like, I, I mean, I can run it. around on a naked thief, and if I steal a command core, well, then great. I've got 80 loadouts good to go at that point, you know? So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> or I've unlocked shadow aspect after one command core, so it, it mm. works out great. But um, um, go ahead. Oh, sorry. This no, might yeah, be a, yeah. like a huge tangent. I was just going to say like, and that's one of the reasons that I also don't like, I don't go on about like thief nerfs and thief buffs that often just because like you don't need anything as a thief. Like they can nerf certain aspects of playing a thief. It doesn't really change anything like getting banned from houses. It sucks for people who don't do house stilling. Like I get it. It sucks. But for the rest of us that don't do that, like it doesn't affect anything. And it's like, it's just one of those things. It's like one of those classes that unless they blatantly do something that's like a hard nerf to thieving, like you can only open a pouch like every 10 seconds or something. It just doesn't really affect thieving. Like it just, yeah. it, you just adapt and you keep going. It's yeah. like, it's still profitable. I'm making the same amount of gold as I always have, if not more. And it's just like, the only thing I want fixed as a thief is the interface shit. <laughs> Having to yeah. dig through razor and the interface of the object delay is so annoying. I 
I just, I just don't do it. And I, I oftentimes yeah. say like, you know, I would still more if I did, but, and my, I just, I'm just so annoyed by having to do exactly that. The object delays back and forth and stuff. And it's just like, screw it. I'm just not going to do it. And then to me, there's another guy 12 spaces down that's got a full bag as well. You know what I mean? For like sure. I'll just move on. So, I mean, I'll drag it just a little bit, but if it's anything that I need to change a setting for no, I'll move on to the next guy. Um, but yeah. I do know that's costing me. I, I get it, but it's just like, I just want people. Yeah. You have to weigh me. the like value to fun ratio. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. does lower the fun quite a bit. hundred <laughs> percent. I just want people to chase me, man. That's all I yeah. want. And, uh, you know, there's, it's funny because, you know, there's certain people that, you know, are going to chase you. And I, yeah. I love it when I see him because I'm like, oh, there's this guy. I'm going to go get him. He's going to yeah. chase me. And then he mm -hmm. does every time. Yeah. And then there's certain people that I know are going to have loot on them and they don't hide anything. And it's like, oh, cool. There's more for the They're giveaway. The <laughs> you know, <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, any, anybody stick out to you that like you steal from and you know, you've got probably a 20% chance of actually getting away. But you still steal from them anyways, or maybe not 20, but you know what I mean. Like somebody that like. It's really got it. Killing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there's one person on the entire server that I tend to not steal from just because it ends up not being worth it. Yeah. Um, I can never remember the name of their PVMer, which is a huge problem because they have a thief hunter. <laughs> who is very fittingly named Sherlock Holmes. Oh, that's uh, great. And he's really fucking good. <laughs> so anytime I see his character, I just do my best not to fuck with him because I know it's going to result in me like just yeah. dying. And it's just like, just not worth it. But outside of that, <laughs> no, there's like the only people that are off limits are people that are in my guild toll and people that pay the toll. So like, yeah, if, if uh, like the whole, the whole thing is just like, if you pay the toll, then I won't steal from you. And it's what do they just drop simple. gold down or do just how drop the... gold, drop something of value, hand it to me. Uh, and like the more valuable it is, the longer I won't steal from you. you know? So you some people have handed me like hair dyes that are worth like 300 K and I've just never stole from them again, just because yeah. it's like, that's respect right there. Yep, you get <laughs> that's a, a toll payment. Yeah. Yep. So I just never steal from them again. And you know, that saves them a lot of effort, saves me a lot of effort. I don't have to, you know, fuck with their inventory. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's just fun. But, um, so no, there's not really outside oh, of that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Outside of that, there's not really anyone that I wouldn't steal from. Obviously, huge shout out to Boss Shot though. He's great. Yeah. Love Boss Shot. He's a legend. Yeah. So. Do you remember right when SSC came out and like there was so many thief hunters? It was like a big thing. And <laughs> SSC was, security, man. SSC security, <laughs> Homa PD, Ossuary PD, yeah. uh, uh, you know, what all of them. It was like the most fun ever it just felt i felt like there was so many thief hunters and uh sure. they all not all of them but a lot of them would like stop and talk to you and like interrogate RPA. you or whatever yeah. and it was just like it was the most fun the only one that's still around is boss shy and yeah. um you know it, it, i i just that that to me was like don't get me wrong i still love it but i mean that to me was prime time to be playing a thief because of that. And especially if you interacted with them, it just created the, super fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking your way out of it and all that. But. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I fully agree. Like I, um, that was like one of the things about toll as well. Cause toll is like half RP. It's like a half RP guild, even though it is like a thief guild. It's like, you know, whether you're red hand or gray hand, any thieves are allowed in toll, but it is like half RP. Like the one requirement I tell people that are new to the guild is like, if someone pays you a toll, you don't steal from them. Like, you know, we run a racket, we run protection. You know, if people are paying their tolls, if they pay a toll to you, like it's on you to determine, like, is that a respectful toll? Like, did they show you respect with the toll payment? If they've got 20 K in their backpack and they drop one K on the ground, that's like a slap in the face. Yeah. But if they've got 20K in their backpack and they drop like 15K, then it's like, okay, that's respect. 
Yeah. You know, they're, and don't they're forget, we're thieves. We can see it. <laughs> we can yeah, see exactly. What, yeah. We can see how much gold you have. So it's like yeah. we can tell if you're fucking with us or not. Yeah. It's like, are you going to fuck with the mob? Do you want those kneecaps smashed in? Because that's like how it works. It's like yeah. if if you if you fuck with Toll, then, you know, Toll fucks with you. If mm-hmm. you pay Toll, you pay off the protection, you pay off the racket, then, you know, I'll bless people. I'll like wall off reds from getting after them. Like if, I'll genuinely like if you if you pay your Toll, you know, I'll I'll help keep you alive in the dungeon. Yeah, so, that's cool. It's that's, like, so is Toll recruiting still, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Toll's always recruiting. Yeah. yeah. Thieves, red hand, mm-hmm. red, uh, gray red hands, hand or both. gray hands. That's cool. We allow the gray hands in. They're not like second class citizens, I swear. But we do, allow <laughs> them, <laughs> we do allow them in because I don't want people attacking anyone in Toll on site. I need gray yeah. hands as like a cloak. Like, yeah. That way They're they the, can't tell who the red hands and the gray hands are, if they can just attack you on site or not. So Yeah. Yeah. So that's, also they farm gold so we can sell our bosses. Yeah. So. And that's very <laughs> profitable. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Which, it is. You can't yeah. add that to rag to riches, though. <laughs> sadly not. Sadly well, I mean, not. I guess technically you could, right? So if you create a character and then you instantly create a guild. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> that, I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's true, actually. Maybe that's a good tip. New players, yeah. create a guild day one. <laughs> yeah true true That's selling fair. your bosses is profitable it's just free gold you might as well there's no reason not to honestly yeah 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 so what is bosses instantly. what is like i get asked this all the time um and what is the most valuable item that you think you've stolen <laughs> i get asked that at least twice a stream for sure <laughs> yeah yeah we'll put it here as of as of uh, February 4th, 2024, the most valuable item that I have personally stolen was a, I think it was powder, oh, I can't remember, what's the powder cloud? I think it was a powder cloud hair dye. Yeah, so nice. It was worth like over two mil or something like that. And that was yeah. not long ago, that was like two months ago or something. I think that was during the Rags for Riches challenge, actually. Oh, and it's over. <laughs> yeah. I think we ended up giving it away, actually, so I didn't actually yeah. get any profit uh, from it. So you lost 100K that day. Yeah. yeah. No, I lost like two mil that day. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so, good. Yeah. I, You know, it, for me, it, it's probably a hair dye or something, but in Dungeons, it's like, you know, you're you're kind of at the mercy of what drops in dungeons. You know what I mean? For sure. So I, I yeah. would definitely say some kind of hair dye. I never really can give anybody a solid answer because I yeah I, I, I don't know. Um, but you know, it's funny. Um, Kazuma actually, he it was like two days ago he posted in my uh, Discord that he stole a uh, skill scroll tome. He's out there at a, at a uh, somebody's stock in their vendor. Don't know why they oh, had the man. tome on them, and there was like three thousand skill scrolls in it. So this is like oh, twenty one million what? at the minimal, right? So if it's uh, all junk scrolls, which it wasn't, right? But if they were all junk scrolls, it was like twenty seven million, and it's like, dude. And I was like, that guy probably quit. <laughs> He yeah. probably quit. Oh my god, man! But but you know, like vendor why? vendor stealing is is. Honestly, if you're wanting to make money, that is like a really good That's, way to do it. It's just boring, bro. It's like, boring. Like the, just the p- only time I the only time I ever vendor still is off stream and when I'm like watching something on my second monitor, I'm just like chilling in Anchor's rest hidden and just waiting. It's like but even then it's pretty rare. But yeah, vendor selling is giga profitable. You just still stacks of stuff off people and people like they're like T-Rexes. As long as you don't move, they don't know you're there. So, like, even after you steal from somebody, if they're vendor shopping, because, like, half the time they have, like, bags over their characters because they're looking through vendors. So, you steal from somebody, and I would say probably, like, 75% of the time, they won't even move. They don't even, like, yeah. you're just stealing it as it goes into their inventory. Yeah. It's uh, You just it's keep crazy. stealing. Yeah. You yep. just keep they, stealing straight up. They just keep buying. And they just keep buying and you just keep stealing and you're like, thanks, there was a stack of three command cores. Oh, there's a stack of three holy cores. Yeah. And three <laughs> exactly. water cores. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> exactly. 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 
Yeah, it's crazy. And people think it's like new players. It's not new players that are doing this shit. Like it's people that are like kitted out and like mega rare stuff. I don't know if they just don't care or what. <laughs> it's yeah. not like there's like this perception that thieves only profit off of new players. Let me in that conception right now. This conception right now this is not true. Yeah. No, I I would say honestly the the veterans are more like yeah silly with their stuff. Like even I mean especially. You know, you go in the back of SSC, you know, switching back to dungeons or whatever. You go to the back of SSC, those guys that just, they don't loot the gold and they're just looting the special items. And they just don't even put it in a pouch or anything. And you're like, wow, this guy's got three cores on him, two skill scrolls and uh, a skill ball. And then you're like, this is great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And half the time, they don't even care when you steal it. Those are the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. They just let you yoink it. They're like, whatever. Meanwhile, when I was a new player, um, I remember getting one skill scroll and being like, oh, time to leave the dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> you for know? sure. I'm still that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> hey, still that stealing, way I do that there. quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Um, so what's your favorite dungeon? Uh, or do you have like a... Um, mm. a yeah. What's your favorite dungeon? Mm. To steal from, obviously. Right that's a toughie that's a toughie it kind of goes with the flow of the players um like whichever dungeon is loaded with players those tend to be my favorite for obvious reasons Mm -hmm. and then the more dangerous the dungeon is that like makes it more my favorite so in general mausoleum 4 is like my favorite the problem with mausoleum 4 is it generally doesn't have people in it anymore um so like Maz 4, Aegis 4 are obviously currently my favorite dungeons because there's just tons of people and they're like always dying. And it's just like you can get people killed on mobs super easily. There's like yep. really good choke points and walling at those places. Um, and I love Nucera as well. Nucera and Ossuary are like, if I had to pick two that are just in general my favorite, Ossuary and Nucera are my favorites just because Nucera is my favorite dungeon and Ossuary is just like a complete death trap. It's just super fun. Yeah. Yeah, so. if Ossuary has people, you know, it's always hit yeah, or miss exactly. with Ossuary. Exactly, that's what uh, I mean when it like it fluctuates. Yeah, yeah. When when Os four, I guess three now. Um, when it was like the hardest dungeon in the game, and it was always packed, like that was the most fun place to steal second sure. to none. You know, running through where the locusts are down in that little bridge. That's kind of yeah, yeah. Hard to run over it and not fall down. It, it was always so much fun, and and it just. I, I loved stealing from there. And so if it is a populated night in Ossuary, it's like, that's the best place to be. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. yeah it's my yeah. favorite for sure. Yeah. And I remember uh, Shadowstone, he would always run around back when pack llamas were able to go into dungeons. He'd be running around killing people's llamas all the time. And he'd just be gray and having people chase him and stuff. And I'd be in there stealing and looting the bodies that <laughs> die and chasing him and stuff. And it was just like, it was great, man. I loved it. So yeah. much chaos, so fun. Yeah. I think yeah. I think looting that, bodies is so much fun. Like it's so good. It's yeah. my favorite. I like it even more than stealing. And I'm yeah. so sad to say it as a thief, but yeah. looting bodies is the yeah. most fun thing you can do in Ultima Online. Yeah. <laughs> by yeah. far. And you, you so typically good. get attacked a lot easier when you loot a body. And for sure. Which again just adds to the excitement of it. But I mean you know, you're rather than getting away with like one water extract, you're getting away with a water extract, their gold. If they got a good eye, uh, weapon, you're getting their weapon and you know, all that. It just, there's so much more. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's good. It's great. The more chaotic a dungeon is the higher up and they're like echelon and tears it goes for me. So just yeah. Yeah. in the future, when you're working on those dungeons, just remember that, just make it as chaotic as possible. <laughs> yes exactly a hundred percent um i can say time is um you know we we've got to play a little bit in time in lucy as well right um, oh really i haven't yeah, heard about and, that and it's uh yeah it's phenomenal um it's gonna be super deadly and uh i i, I, I I don't, I, yeah, it's going to be fun to steal in for sure. Um, I, I don't know how much we'll make out from there with things, but it'll be fun to steal in for sure. You know <laughs> what I mean? I don't know how much yeah. people will actually chase you. Um, yeah. but 
it's probably just going to be more like, okay, just don't steal my regs and we're okay. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, um, I, I, the thing I'm curious about is cause I, correct me on anything I'm wrong here. I've heard it's like 40 floors. Yeah. So I don't know 40, but, um, it's, uh, it's huge. So right now, um, it was, uh, it's the size of it's bigger than the size of every dungeon currently put together. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. It's gigantic. Um it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Um okay. and so it, it's not I mean granted it, my thought is I don't think that like I would go down there on just my PVM template and start farming fill up my bags and leave. You know what I mean? It's more of like, you know, DTF comes to mind. They do Deal this expedition. great. Like, yeah, exactly. Like they get 10, 20 deep and they go into Moss 4 and they just kill stuff, right? For yep. hours. And then, you know, yep. maybe they send somebody out to go put the gold off or whatever. But, you know, that is what it is. And, and, and that is, you know, you go down there, you fight your way through, you go to a spot and you're just farming experience and looting the special items. You fight your way out. And if you wipe, well, you're wiped and you're dead. Um, and there's, you're, you're screwed. You're, you're not going to yeah. make it back. So it's more of like an XP farm. Yeah. In theory. Right. Um, but there's like some quests and stuff in there too, but I'm oh, excited. Shit, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for it. At least that's the, 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 the process that they were talking about. So pretty exciting. it sounds sick it sounds awesome yeah. It's, yeah. it sounds like i might have to work tracking it in my build because <laughs> it's so big yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. because you'll spend an hour going one way and if you would have just went two minutes you would have caught a group yeah. of people over here it's a good point exactly actually. <laughs> yeah so yeah might see it might see tracking in the build soon <laughs> we'll see so i guess i'm excited sounds cool um so what what kind of like goals would you say that you have for for the stream right now or future or plans i mean i know you talked a little bit about other games maybe things like that or i'm always thinking of ways to make the stream more fun for people um you know like streaming is obviously it is a hobby for me, but it's also something that I value as more than a hobby only because it presented itself that way. It's not something I ever went into with the mindset of like, let's make this like my career. Let's make this my job, et cetera, et cetera. Let's not make money off of it. You know, that was never when I started streaming, that was like, I didn't think about that at all. So, and it's more like it just kind of fell into my lap as something like that. And so I try to keep that initial mentality of like, I just wanted to be something I do as fun and it just happens to like work out this way. And so I really do want to like push that sort of angle more in the future of streams. So like streaming other stuff, not just holding it down with UO all the time, constantly. Not that I'm like, I'm not burnt out on UO or anything. It's nothing like that. It's just like UO has a limited number of people playing it. Yeah. And it's not the most user friendly game. Like mm -mm. over time, it's going to lose players. It's just how it is. And I've always had this idea where I can stream UO and I can stream other games and people from other games will see me and they'll watch the stream and then I can pull them back to UO and then they're like, oh, this shit looks sick. Yeah. And then like I can pull more people into UO by like branching out the stream. So that's like, that's something I'm really interested in doing is like trying to introduce new people and more people to UO. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Like I have to find the right time, the right place, the right energy, right yeah. game, that kind of stuff. So right energy that, that's is like, huge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So that that's like something I really want to do more of is just like trying to introduce more people that have never heard of it um to you. Cause there's like I talked about this a little earlier. Like I would I would love to get that experience as a new player to UO again. Yeah. And so when I get people that are like, oh, I've never seen this game before. What is this? Like, I can kind of like vicariously live through that energy of like, damn, yeah. that's so sick. <laughs> like, I, I love it when I see somebody stream and they're like, day one, Outlands. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, this guy's yeah. got my attention for a while, you know? Yeah. And um, I just always hope that they, 
you know, stick around for a long time and, 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 uh, you know, I get to see them evolve in the game and it's fun watching them ask questions and then chat, tell them and stuff, you know, uh, Roggy Froggy was uh, a recent one that, you know, he started playing and was just like, Oh, this yeah. game's great. You know? And it's just like, it's mm-hmm. cool, but you're, you're hundred percent right. Like, um, you know, it's kind of a, a weird thing right now. So used to, when somebody would say like, oh, I've never played Ultima before. This is my first time playing it. And like, I'd meet them in, in the game. I'd be like, wow, like you're playing this game and you've never played it before. I didn't realize that new people actually play this. Now yeah. I see more and more of that. But at the same time, like, you know, I do understand that the game's dated, you know, and, and Outlands does a tremendous job of bringing it up to that new age. But the game core is still Ultima online and it has shitty controls and a shitty interface. <laughs> and I know that I'm going to get pegged at the stake for saying the, the shitty interface because we love it, right? I love yeah. it. I love how the game works and, and I love the graphics and things like that. But for an outsider who's not played it, they think it's <laughs> mm-hmm. just garbage. And some people are like, I like that graphic style. And they yeah, never yeah. played it, but overall. And, and so it will get dated and, It is, you know, I I mean, I share that same thought process with you of like, you know, when I do decide to stream other games or when I do decide to make content for other games, which is a really big step for me because that's not just logging on and playing the game. I mean, that's like, you know, coming up with content, writing a script, spending Mm -hmm. 10, 15 hours editing a video or whatever. um, and, And then or multiple ones. It's like it's a big decision. Um, I think. And so, but I want people to, I want to pull people from that game and it's for sure. I I can definitely share with you on that. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think, I I think as like people who stream UO, I'm not saying like, you're, you're not saying you're like obligated to go and try and like advertise for UO to keep our game alive. But I think as streamers, we are in like a special position to do that sort of thing like people on twitch are gonna see you know people like you and me playing ultima and you know if it doesn't look fun when they tune in they're like oh that game shit i'm out so it's like as streamers we are in a special position to really like help uo excel and stay alive as long as possible by making it look fun and having fun with it and not taking it so serious and you know being toxic and you know that kind of stuff so it's like it, it makes me happy because when I started streaming and I'm sure it was the same for you that there wasn't that many people that streamed UO. Like yeah. when I started yeah. streaming like two years ago, yeah. a year and a half ago, there was like Canaman occasionally blacklisted. And that was like pretty much it on, on Twitch anyways. Yeah. Um, and so now, you know, anytime I log on to Twitch, you know, there's always like, there's like normally at least five people streaming at any time. It's like, damn. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's grown so, so it's much. So like when I had kind of started, it was uh, well, when I was originally, I was only going to make a one video a week and that was all I was going to do. Had absolutely no intentions of streaming or anything. But then, you know, thousand subscribers special. I was like, all right, let's stream this boxing match that we're going to give away a million gold for. <laughs> and uh, it was like a a. a three-way thing with me mustache and um uh trammy and uh and i decided to go ahead and stream it and then i just had a good time and i kept streaming and i didn't stop and then suddenly now it's turned into what it has you know and i still make videos and still make shorts and you know all in this and all that stuff and and um it you know a big thing was exactly what you're talking about where i was like man like I mean, I, I'm between multi-platform streaming, I'm raking in, you know, almost 200 people on a stream on the weekends, like, but it's not going to grow unless there's, you know, the outreach is better. Obviously I'm making videos and that gives good outreach, mm-hmm. but I can't do that. You know, I'm at capacity of like what I can actually output. And if I'm streaming, well, that's capacity as well. So Mm -hmm. how can I get more outreach? Well, we need more streamers. We need more people making videos. And so then I really started focusing on like, 
you know, encouraging, I mean, I've, I would always encourage people anyways, but I mean, just like really focusing on encouraging people to stream mm -hmm. and letting them know how much fun it is. And then also just like you said, I mean, I really like the streamers that are positive in their interactions. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the ones that are just like negative and like this game fucking sucks and you know, stuff like that. It's like, well, then why are you playing it? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just like yeah. weird, but, but um, I just know that, that that's how the game is going to grow if it can grow is is from it can. Yeah, yeah yeah including outlands normal marketing and stuff i'm not taking anything away from that yeah and them playing so. or and them creating a great game as they have and continue to develop on that too so but. yeah and yeah like absolutely you know taking nothing away from outlands of course because the reality is I would not be playing Euro currently. <laughs> it was not for Outlands. I don't think I would either. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've said it a bunch on stream, you know, there's obviously things I can, can complain about, you know, dealing with the interfaces that thief sucks ass. You know, I can complain about that all day, but at the end of the day, I always talk up Outlands because Outlands is the best Euro server that has ever existed. Period. Yeah. Bar none. Like end of story. Uh, not, not even retail. Retail had the advantage of nostalgia and it has the advantage of being a unique experience in the sense that we've never done anything like UO until we played UO. So, you know, you'll never recapture that magic. Yeah. But in terms of like how much fun I've had overall, Outlands is like up here and yeah. retail is like right here probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Outlands is ran so professionally. The map design's in crazy. Like the balance changes. There's events constantly. Like they're constantly doing, you know, just things for the server to keep it alive. So it's, uh, it's ran so professionally, honestly. So, you know, huge kudos to the staff and the development team over at Outlands. You guys are killing it. Yeah, big time. Um, I mean, it's it, it almost gets to a point where it's it's funny because, you know, I've said this many times where a new game will come out and I'll start playing it. And then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. out, I get a notification and announcements on Outlands and they're like, this week we're doing hip lanterns. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, God dang it. All right. I got to go back, <laughs> you know, and it, it's like yeah. that. And, you know, I've played UO off and on since I started when I was young. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you know, uh, you know, even on like other servers, I'd get going, I'd get a house, quit playing, house would fall, everything would go, you know, whatever. Maybe I'd play some more, but here on Outlands, ever since I've started, I have not quit playing. Like, and and I and I don't feel like I'm gonna quit anytime soon. You know, like I'm mm. eagerly looking forward to Wildlands. I have absolutely no intentions of quitting, but I am concerned if and when, you know, we all die someday, right? But uh, when Outlands uh, stops being a thing, hopefully far after I'm dead, right? But yeah, um, same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same. But like, I question that too. Would I play Ultima? Maybe there'd be another shard out that's kind of similar. I don't know, but I don't see myself. If, if it was, if tomorrow the door shut on Outlands, You'd be getting a lot more GTA streams for me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I don't, I, I mean, and there's great other, other great UO servers out there. I'm not knocking any of them for sure, but it, I just don't think that I would jump on board with one man, at least not instantly. Who knows? But, not instantly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. The, the UO craving is eternal. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. say it's uh, you know, it's like the classic stereotype you get horribly hung over and you're like i'm never drinking again and then you know x amount yeah. of time later you're drinking again <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know, it's like exactly. That. i'd take a month off and then i'd get bored of world of warcraft or something and i'd be like yeah all right what's this server here okay let me just log in thanks you know mm -hmm. i'm streaming it for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly yeah uh, so, that's cool but I, I think one of the things that outside of like the um the dev team Owen and you know all of them being so like professional about the way they handle stuff outside of that is just how much quality of life Outlands has and that's where I think other servers are really going to struggle to pull people in it's like there's so much quality of life in Outlands without breaking um, without breaking yeah, like without yeah. breaking it and making it too easy you know yeah exactly yeah. there's just there's so many things in Outlands now that I would take for granted 
you know, like your storage shelves. You've got like all these tomes for storing your stuff. Like there's just so much like organizational stuff. And it's just like, man, I could not go to a server that I just stick everything in a treasure box or I stick everything in my bank and I have to grab my regs manually or with a grab script and razor. Like I just can't yeah, do it. I, I don't have it anymore. I was just talking about that last night. Like, you know, yeah, you can use a scavenger or whatever, but it just, it, it feels way different, you know, a scavenger yeah. th- thing. And then, you know, used to, it's like, if I died, most of the time I'm logging off because I don't yeah. want to restock, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah, not exactly, like I'm rage exactly. quitting. I mean, I guess in a sense it is, but it's just like, mm. oh man, I got to put all that stuff back on. It's just, UO is tedious in the like yeah. little mundane things like that. And mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff, like the crafting queue and the the storage shelf, just mm-hmm. like what you're saying, all those stuff, even the map, it just, you're right. It, it, it brings it back up to 2024 for it, a game that was made so in 97, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's just very cool. And I, so make more of those guys, <laughs> whatever they are, because <laughs> it's already very easy. But, you know? Yeah. Um, if you like, Let's say you got the check for a day. Um, you you can make any change, any new addition, any suggestion. Like you know, Owen and Luthius came to you in Expo, and they're like, "All right, Mister Jester, it's the number <laughs> one thing you want to see on Outlands or change about Outlands. We're gonna make it happen." Okay. Well, you've you've heard me complained about it a couple times already so you probably already know what it's gonna be i'm probably gonna Um, be in the same boat (laughs) yeah it is the way that the interface works with stilling the having to turn on object delay and razor having to go into my options and resize my interface just to deal with people like stacking stuff in a corner of their inventory which there's tons of arguments we can get into on this topic. It's like, well, that's like thief prevention. It's like, okay, well, then they shouldn't be able to access a bag that's buried inside of a bag that's buried inside of a bag that's buried inside of a bag if a thief can't also access it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Make it make sense. Yeah. If they can stick their hands in it, then I should be able to stick my hands in it because it's yeah. like, it's a pocket. Yeah. Um, so, like, fixing that kind of stuff, I don't know how they could do it. I don't know how they can rework the inventory system. So, it's like, I personally think a grid layout is really the honest answer is like having an inventory. That's a grid. So I like know each it's like box totally, has one item. Yes, okay. exactly. Like I know it's like very anti UO and a lot of people are going to be like, no, fuck that. I love UO's inventory system. And I do too. I love UO's inventory system tremendously, but having to use outside mechanics to play a class that is built into UO to play the class is just, it's not fun. Like it's just not a fun mechanic to do. Like I shouldn't have to turn object delay on and off or go into my interface and like resize it constantly to play a thief. Because like, if you don't do those things, playing a thief is it's so neutered. Like as you know, Mm -hmm. as you were saying, uh, you know, you miss out on tons of loot because you won't do those things. And that, and I don't blame you. It's super tedious. It's super annoying. It's time consuming. It's frustrating. It's not fun. Uh, and it doesn't make sense mechanically or balance wise. It's like it's not, it's not a balanced choice. It's just an archaic leftover mechanic in UO that needs to be fixed. So that yeah. would be my change. Is like working that shit out. I don't care yeah. about whatever else you nerf on Thief. Just fix that shit, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't care about any of this other shit that's happening. I just want that fixed. It's I'm all tired of bringing my options up and down nonstop. Yes, <laughs> I hear yes. you. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I've always thought would be cool is like. You know, like if somebody's got their pouches trapped up there in the corner or whatever, a robe over the top of it, is that I could maybe, and I don't know if the game can even do this, right? But um, if I could pick up the robe or a pouch and drag it to another part in their inventory, and maybe I have a eight second delay just like in stealing, right? And it And it does a snooping and stealing check every time I move it. That's fine, you know, as long as... I can get that stuff out of the way. And maybe they see me doing it. Like, you know, obviously they'd see it move and they'd be like, oh shit, there's a thief on me because my pouch just moved. So I know he's in here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, I I think that would be fun. Um, For sure. Just, I'm with you though, man. Just something to get rid of that. And I know there's people out there like, 
saying like, oh God, that's terrible. Why would we buff thieves? They're already a bunch of nuisances and dicks. And it's like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a buff. They can come up with other nerfs to balance it. I just, I just don't want to have to do that to play a thief. Like if you want to, if you want to like add like a longer still cooldown or like you want to change your percentages, like it's whatever, just fix it. You know, yeah. I don't, I yeah. don't care what it takes. Just get us there. Man. Right. It's, Bring it's, us to 2024. Should, shouldn't have to change options in a game mm. to properly execute something. I mean, yeah, it, it just, I agree with you, mm. man. I think it's silly. I think it's very mm. silly. Mm. Um, I, I, and, and it's not just it's not like a thing you log in and you do it once like you do it every single person you check it's constant yeah. it's nonstop. it's just so tedious and frustrating yeah. yeah yeah i and that's why i just said screw it i'm just moving yeah. on to the next guy and you know that's a valid argument of like we'll just move on to the next guy and it's like well yeah but i mean that's just like a simple you shouldn't have like complete thief prevention yeah, because exactly. you moved you your items a certain mm-hmm. way. If I if I had a purse I, right now, man, I can't put all my stuff in a certain area exactly. to keep you from stealing. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to end up talking about this for an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I don't think that stacking your stuff in one position should be able to counter 700 skill points. It just right. doesn't, balance-wise, it doesn't make any sense. It just no. doesn't make sense. no. Not at all. Not at all. At least give me a hundred skill points that I can do something with that. Exactly. To exactly. <laughs> like let us use snooping to like move stuff in their inventory or something. Yeah. Like you said. Just something. Yeah. Just give us something. <laughs> yep. Um. So what other what other games are you uh, excited about? I mean, obviously GTA, but I mean, is there any games that you know whether whether you would be streaming it or not, man? Um. Mm. Is there any other games that are coming up? Uh, recently that you're excited about yeah definitely yeah, yeah, <laughs> dragon's yeah. dogma too okay okay well is, that's like the, is it yeah tell me about dragon's dogma okay so dragon's dogma one was for those of you who have played it either have one of two opinions you either think it's the greatest game ever made or you think it's too janky to be good and both of those statements i agree with at the same we time. play ultimate it's the jankiest <laughs> game in the world so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dragon's Dogma is a super fucking awesome game where it's a bit of an RPG, a bit of an, it's like an action RPG where you have like three party members with you and you basically, it's like Skyrim. If Skyrim had good combat, um, yeah, that'd be great. like fun combat. Yeah. It's uh, you can like climb on, you fight like mythological creatures, like ogres and like trolls, you know, giant golems, dragons, you could like you can just like jump on them and you can like climb on them. It's like kind of like Shadow of Colossus if you've ever played that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I've seen so, it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can like you just like climb on stuff. Like you're just like climbing on a dragon and like stabbing it with your sword and it's like flying through the air trying to get you off of it. And you have like party members that are like having you jump on their shield and they're launching you into the air so you can cling to it in the air. It's like this fucking awesome game. It's on PS3. Yeah. If you never played it, it's also on Steam. If you never played it, you need to play it. It's fucking awesome. Okay. But part two comes out next month. And I've never been more excited for a game because part nice. one is like one of my favorite games of all time. Cool. So I probably won't stream it, but <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. I, I get it. I get it. So, you know, for me, Final Fantasy VII Remake Rebirth, I guess is what it's called. It comes out in like, I don't know, yeah. 10 days or it's 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 coming mm. out soon. And I'm yep. very much looking forward to it. I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I've already <laughs> budgeted to buy a PlayStation 5 for oh, it. Shit. And uh, I don't think I'll be uh, I don't think I'll be streaming it either just because, again, I want that one to be, you know, I did the first one delved in and um, I want to do the same with this one. And, you know, I'm excited for it. But to your your point, man, Skyrim, is it not funny how um, it's an amazing game, right? One of the best games ever. But for sure. You're 100 percent right, man. The combat in that game is so lackluster and mm-hmm. simple, and you know, yeah, you can tune the monsters' hit points and stuff up, but it doesn't make it more difficult. It just makes it no. take longer. And it's just like it's unfortunate because the yeah. game is amazing. It's just that part sucks. I, I love Elder Scrolls games. I love them all. Marwin's like one of my favorite games of all time, um, but. 
they all have similar problems and that's that the combat is just so bad <laughs> it's yeah. just so chat. there's a lot of mods for skyrim that turn it into like dark souls and stuff like that and it's pretty sick but that's cool yeah. but that's does always have that problem where like once once there's mods for the game they're like game of the decade once you mod them <laughs> but yeah. before that it's like i mean i played skyrim when it launched in like 2011 um came out on my birthday and it was a sick experience. I was like, played it on PS3. I was like, damn, this game is so good. But that's to hit it again. Yeah. But in retrospect, it's like, I could never play unmodded Skyrim again. Like, it would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They've done some wild mod. Like, sometimes it's fun just to jump on YouTube and just like YouTube modded Skyrim and see yeah. like the crazy, it's you insane. Know, armors and graphic updates and photorealistic <laughs> yeah. yeah and there's some really weird ones too but you yeah. know and and and, yeah. and of course it's skyrim and the music is perfect and and it's it's a really immersive game and uh you know it's it's an amazing game but i, I haven't done any of the combat uh mods that's pretty cool i might look into mm-hmm. those um but dark souls i'm bad like you know, Elden Ring was like easy yeah. in comparison to Dark Souls from what I'm told. Mm. It's a lot more fluid. And mm, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I suck. Like, <laughs> like, and I get it, everybody sucks, but no, yeah. I like I suck, suck. Like, like it's not yeah. fun, I suck. So <laughs> but I'm sure it's entertaining as hell to watch though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, right? Maybe. <laughs> If there's um, anything I've learned, it's that people love watching the streamer suffer. So yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Ironically, every time I get a gray screen and uh, uh, UO <laughs> chat just blows up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. This is uh, what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So I always like to ask everybody, man. Like, who who do you think who comes to mind? Um, your guest number 12. Thank you, by the way. But um, thank you. You're the, you're the year special, bro. Look at that. <laughs> hey, let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who should be uh, the next guest on the phone cast? Okay. They, they don't stream. I don't know if that's a factor for who you pick or not. Um, oh. But it's got to be my man, legendary Louie. Okay. Avedon's finest yeah. tailor. I would love <laughs> to see him on here just because like, He's been such a member of like my community, especially like he's been there since almost day one and uh, just like it, turning him into like a bit of a meme with the cloaks, the the Louis cloaks that we always give away with our giveaways and like the respect that's put on the Louis cloak and being Avedon's yeah. finest tailor, that kind of stuff. He's just uh, and he's also just an insanely generous person. He's super nice, super friendly, but uh He's got a great personality, so yeah, I would, I would like to see a legendary Louis on here. <laughs> he he's got his um, either YouTube or Twitch uh, emo of Louis CK on there too, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe about not. That. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I thought so. Maybe not. Who knows? But, <laughs> maybe uh, I just never noticed. Well, also maybe because that was on, he was on YouTube. Mm. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but. Um, yeah, that'd be a good one for sure. The the nice red I think, cloak. I think it would be funny. I'd have to, and hopefully he would have one too. But I'd have to get like a red, either towel <laughs> and like tie it like a cloak on me, or like get an actual red cloak, you know, and be sick. <laughs> and be it'd like, be yeah, I got my Louis cloak on. <laughs> but cool, man. Well, that'd be sick. I really do appreciate you, uh, you know, accepting the invite to be here, man. Um, long time coming for sure. Long time coming for sure. Um, I knew this would be a good one just because we have <laughs> a, a lot in common, uh, especially thieving, right? And, um, for sure. you know, I would say it did not disappoint on my end, so I appreciate it. Um, I mean, everybody knows who you are, but uh, tell everybody all your uh, socials and uh, where they can find you, man. <laughs> yeah, so you guys can, uh, if you guys have never watched the stream, you can head over to twitch.tv slash Sanguine Jester, where you can find me. I stream Tuesdays through Fridays, generally fairly early in the morning. Go from 10 a.m. CST. Normally, we end around 4 p.m. CST, so we don't uh, don't get to interact with Pwn Star as much as I would like, unfortunately, because we just got totally different streaming schedules. But uh, yeah. yeah, 
thank you so much for having me on. It's been awesome. It's been a, uh, yeah, it was great. It's good. Of course. Of course, um, man. It's been too long since I've been on here. You know, I, I remember, um, I remember when you first started doing the pwn cast, like, oh, that seems sick as shit. I'd love to be on there. So it's a, it's a complete honor to be on here. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's been great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, barely there was the first one, actually. Barely there was the first one. So, but yeah. Deserving, deserving. And then, and He's then great. it was uh, Sir and then Lucy, I think. Or maybe it was Lucy and then Sir. I don't know. <laughs> you got the, you got the ringers on here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks Perfect. again, man. Guys, Phone Star Gaming out. Oh,